Hello everyone, hope you're doing fine. In this video, I'm going to solve a few problems that I've asked in the previous semester's final exams, or maybe some civil engineering related problem with if functions. Now, as a practice for final exam, there will be a video talking about how the exam will be, but I will practice through the videos that I'm creating it so that you will be able to know how you're going to do final exam. Now when you open Excel, the exam will be limited duration, 90 minutes we have it. So you start the exam as soon as you start. So when you open Excel, you're going to right click somewhere around, for example, here on the grease part. So I'm going to right click here, customize the ribbon, then make sure developer is checked by default is unchecked so take this one press ok then you will be having a new tab here by name dev developer now you can open click on that one then at the beginning of the this is the beginning of the exam let's say that I'm doing an exam so when you add this one it will be there you don't need to add this one always so when you close Excel and open it this will still be here now you're gonna click on record macro you're gonna click on record macro then you're gonna name the macro just your first name say my name is supposed to be name no spacing for example you cannot space and write your surname if you want to write it directly you can write it together no space you just write your name will be enough there you press OK then you start solving your problem now why do I ask you to do this one so that you will not have any problem maybe someone is it happens in the exam students claim that someone took his file so in order to be on the safe side you're gonna do this one if you don't do this I'm not gonna accept your paper for the exam so you're gonna record it and it will be something like this at the end of the exam when you finish it you're gonna click on the stop recording then I'm gonna show to you how to save it now so the macro is recording now it just simply will be used for to make sure that the file when I'm checking it I will check through this recording to see what we have done so we're gonna start solving a question I have it here look the, the recording is not the duration something it's whatever you do this so it doesn't matter it will not make the size of the Excel bigger now this is an example I asked this which is 1819 spring final exam a question with a function simple one now remember we did something like this it's in civil engineering we have we call this one beam and we want to find moment and shear I told you that those doesn't matter as engineer like civil engineer you have a table you have a table you're supposed to understand that for the beam shown below if you don't know what does beam means it's still okay so the table shown below R1 R2 M V so we cal we want to calculate value of R1 it's here R2 M V four values you want to calculate it value of X P R X P L are inputs so the values of X P L will be inputs it means that we have to put input X P L when we input those value R1 R2 M V will be calculated now you realize that L is the this the length of the beam, X is the distance we have it here, P is for this load we call load here, and then those are the three inputs we have it. Then the others we're finding will be R1, this one here, and we're gonna find R2. There's something here, and there's M and V, which is according to the location of the X. So it says R, R, R1 is equal to 5p over 16 we don't have any condition here it's only one output now when when we know if 
when it comes to calculation then we know that we need if or not now r1 is only one equation so i can directly write it here r2 is only one equation 11p over 16 so one equation one equation no need for if when it comes to m to calculate m m says that it's r1 times x when x is between 0 l over 2 it means for the half of this half if x is here then this is the equation if x is bigger than l over 2 smaller than l it means that this side here this side here then we have to use this equation now you realize that m has two equation i mean two possibility so if i want to write inside here i have to put those two inside an if function and i know that two output two output one if function is enough to write m here now the conditions however which one i'm going to use it it will be up to us now l over two here it's a variable why because it depends on the l here so we're going to write this one down to see how we're writing this as well then for v similar v is equal to r1 when it's between 0 l over 2 it's minus r2 when it's x between l over 2 and l so i realize again v has two equations and i can use if function to cover both of them based on the logic i have it here so let me take those put them beside here so I'm gonna write it down the value the input will be x p l our input and we're gonna find r1 capital r1 r2 capital M V this will be L be nice so we have a table like this remember those coloring things leave it for the end do not do any coloring First, finish the question, then go for the coloring. I don't care. I don't care about the coloring part there. Now I'm gonna start with R1 is equal to R1 5p, 5 times p is gonna be here over 16. I don't need any parentheses. Well, some days we need parentheses for the top, but no need for the top as well. If you put it still okay, Why? because there's multiplication between them, it's not gonna be a problem. Then this is R1. This will be R2, sorry, R2. And R2 is equal to 11P, 11 times P over 16. Is that right here? Yes. And the key again, I didn't put parentheses because I know that multiplication, there is no problem. If it's plus, yeah, I had to put parentheses between them, then divide by 16. Then for M, when it comes to M, look, this was 25 mark in the final exam. But remember, if you understand what you're doing, it will be easy. An if function. Now the logical test. The logic here says what? X. I remember. Remember we can neglect this one here. We can say if and we can call this one else. The same thing for here. I can neglect cancel the second one say this is if and the other one be else now this how do you read this one x greater equal to zero and smaller equal to l over two it means that it's a closed range remember we said closed range we're going to use and it's a closed range we're going to use and why because i have two tail to check it so x to be greater than 0 at the same time x to be smaller than l over 2 so i have two logic to be true then i'm going to use this equation in that case we need whether and or here we need and to solve the problem so i'm going to say and remember understand why i need and because i say x to be greater equal to zero this is the first then i have to rewrite it again x to be smaller equal to l over 2 l over 2 now the logic finished remember and is active do not continue 
to the value of true and you see and is active so close the parenthesis then you see now the if is active it means that it's time to go for value of true so if I mean both of them must be true why because we want it to be in between two values remember I've seen from student like this they say okay can I write it like this to be they will write a zero like this they will say X then they will write it the same way that they see it L over 2 now Excel does not understand this one it doesn't understand what is this it's not the way that you're writing it here X 0 something this is wrong so I needed to understand this one this is does not work here I'm not talking about the newer versions I'm not sure I haven't checked 2019 but from 16 below it does not work like this logic must be 3 it's like 1 2 3 4 5 part does not work so we have to write it the way that I explained X to be greater greater equal to 0 then again sorry should have been here my mistake then again X to be smaller equal to we say L over 2 then we're gonna close the parenthesis for and then if this is true we have R1 times X R1 is here times X then if this is not true we said this we're not gonna use this one why because we say if this is if this will be else I don't need to check this one because the, the value falls carrying L over 2 till L now some students say that what if you put bigger than L yes true in that case even that one will be within the else one so if you want to make it more appropriate I can put another if another if but this if for the exam I'm not accepting I like it's optional I'm accepting with one if it's enough but if you say that okay let me let me make it more general what do I mean by more general imagine if if X is between 0 and L over 2 L over 2 it's gonna come here what if it's minus like if I put minus it will come here yes, and it will be wrong if I put something more than bigger than L is still gonna come to you in the second equation because because second one will be else whatever it is not in the first range it's gonna go for the second one but if I want to separate the like non-defined values for example negative or bigger than L it's not defined I can put another if there look I can just simply copy the end right? because it's um, uh, this is also and just changing the value this time we'll say x x to be bigger than bigger than there is no equal so bigger than or greater than l over 2 l over 2 but to be smaller equal to l smaller equal to l I'm saying again this if is not required but I'm making it more general not just one if it's enough then this time we'll say P times L over 2 minus 11 X over 16 so P multiply remember multiply parenthesis opening here no need for parenthesis for this one L over 2 L over 2 then minus again there is 11 times X 11 since there is multiplication between them no need for parenthesis divided by 16 and I'm going to close the parenthesis now this is value of true what if it is not I'm going to say I'll say that wrong x wrong value of x this is just for myself to know that I'm going to close the parenthesis for the first second first if sorry the second if then I'm going to close the parenthesis for the first if I have it there if I hit enter for example if I let's put some values here this is 4 let's say this is 100 now if I put 1 it's working if I put minus because it's not within the range here it's not going to go to here now if I if I hadn't write the second if it would go inside here why because if else but minus 1 cannot be so I'm saying wrong value of X if I say 
bigger than L because this is between L over 2 and L. So if I write 6 here, it's going to still give me wrong value of X. Why? Because it is not defined, so it's only supposed to be between 0 and 4. 0 and 4. There is another way to manage this one with the, the if in the beginning, in the beginning, we can manage this one with different way. Like for example, I can say that if I can start with this way. For example, the value here. So let me make it an or with an or function. I'm gonna repeat. Re, for example, another way of thinking. If or this one is smaller than zero will be minus yes it's not acceptable or this one is bigger than l if any of these two i can write wrong value wrong value of x now let's say this is also a possible way a possible way of writing for example if it's minus if this is 6 oh, this is 6 also bigger let's say make it 2 2 this will be because I didn't write anything here I can write value of true for this one a value of false says then x is okay or the value of x value of x is okay Look, for example, if the value of x is okay, it's going to calculate them. But if value of x is not okay, you realize it's here is okay, wrong value of x. I can put it in different way. It's up to you, wherever it is. This is, look what I said. I said this is the or here I used it. Why? Because I said whether we're either smaller than 0 or bigger than L, it's not acceptable. That's also an or I use it here, not and. Why? Because those two cannot happen at the same time. Smaller than 0, bigger than L. It's an open range, that's why I'm using OR here. Okay, this is not a part of the question. And here again, I said that this is no needed. Why? Because if you are an engineer, when, well, basically, when I'm not saying you are an engineer, I mean, when you study these things, you know that X cannot be negative, X cannot be more than L. So that's why I'm making it as simple as it is. I'm going to remove the second IF. I'll bring the calculation here. So this is appropriate way for yourself to do it but for the purpose of this here will be enough like I'm saying that if it is between here come here if not will be there Let's see what the parent is there it is one okay now like minus goes there yes we we know that it cannot be minus zero it's there it's okay like two it's okay but we know that we must ourselves as engineer we're not gonna put five because five it's not within the here so we shall keep the value of x between zero and four here because between zero and l then i can write the same thing for if for if, if v value value of v if I can use the second one, I can use the first one, it's up to me, but still it's and by the way, I could use it's the same logic here, yes. So sometimes you can save and just simply copy this part here. Then I can start with it, double double click, then control V. It's basically the same logic. If this is true, what do I have? R1. R1. If this is not true. We're going to take minus of R2. That's it. So, if this is if this logic is true, which means X between 0 and L over 2, because I'm using AND, X to be greater or equal to 0, X to be smaller or equal to L over 2. If this is true, we're going to say K17. K17 basically is R1. If it is not true, we're going to say minus L17, which is R minus R2 according to the rule I have it here hit enter and it's gonna find for me L to be 10 meter then I can find at any location that I wanted for example 2.5 or anywhere that I wanted for example 5.8 
factor any values but remember this x must be between 0 so this is 0 to L it can be between 0 to L so you have to write it somewhere so that if the person want to use it they know it's between 0 to L so L is 10 this stuff from 0 to 10 so an easy one easy question let me tell now let's say that this is look you're not gonna do this process and the end of until end of the exam so let's say exam finished exam finished what are we going to do we're going to develop but this is at the end of the exam you do it and then for example 10 minutes before the link is going to close so you're going to develop a, then you're going to stop recording now this is in the beginning you start record macro and then in the end you will stop recording now when when you send your file to me if I click on the macro I will see your name there so I'm gonna use this one to check your exam if you don't have this one you will prepare yourself for the rest of the exam so make sure that and this is by the way I know if the student watching the video I will, pre I will prepare video before for the midterm for the final as well I'm gonna post it there I'm gonna write it within the beginning of the exam as well please record by using macro not to have any problem for the marking I'm gonna write it down there as well now when this is done you have to save it differently so when you save this time you're gonna to go to file you're gonna say save as now let's say I'm gonna choose desktop now when you come to saving here you're gonna click here you're gonna click here and we're going to use Excel macro enabled workbook I have to click on Excel macro enabled workbook then you're gonna write your name student number and you press save there now this is what you have to do then you'll be able to send the file to me then I'm gonna use the macro within the Excel file that you send it to me for checking now in the next video we're gonna solve another example which is a bit harder which needs some more if values to solve a problem we have a big flowchart here so this will be the next video coming there thanks for watching